So first, good afternoon, Kamal Jos, and thank you all for joining us. Um, again, I'd also like to thank the government of Georgia for putting on such an excellent forum all day. And I know uh, this may be the last panel of the day, but I think it will be the most interesting and exciting. So I'm glad you've all stuck around. Um, my name is Matthew Orsman. I'm a partner at the law firm Pillsbury Winthrop Shaw Pittman. Um, we are a global law firm with 21 offices around the world. But I've had the honor of working here in Georgia for about six years. I've worked with the government itself, as well as for some of the largest investors here in Georgia. Previously, I had an academic career focused on China's activity along the Silk Road. So, and today I work regularly with countries and businesses across Asia and Europe. So with this background, I can say with confidence that Georgia truly presents a unique opportunity for major transshipment as a major transshipment and business hub in an essential geographic location. And I think we've heard that over and over again today. The modern Silk Road is being paved with road, rail, and sea links, making it simple, inexpensive, and efficient to move goods from one side of Eurasia to the other for the first time in history. Now, you've heard this earlier today, but it bears repeating that Georgia sits at the heart of this vast new network and is emerging as a key transshipment hub for moving goods east and west, north and south, whether it's from Asia to Europe, the Middle East, and India. And Georgia has played a key role in bringing down physical and regulatory barriers and building the infrastructure and services to make it an attractive and logical point through which manufacturers and suppliers can ship goods through Europe. And with trade finance and other financial incentives available, Georgia has become a hub through which goods can move across the continent easier than ever before. Georgia's participation in regional initiatives, whether it's the Baku Tbilisi Cars Pipeline, uh, sorry, Railway Link, or the Anaklia Port, uh, gives Georgia a new position as a transshipment destination in a strategically important location. Georgia itself is also developing into a major manufacturing hub uh, for value-added manufacturing to utilize this exceptional transportation links and all of the great free trade agreements that Georgia has with its neighbors. Obviously, I'm incredibly bullish about Georgia. I, I, I'm a huge fan, but you don't need to take my word for it. We've assembled a really fantastic panel for you today uh, to talk to you about what's going on and provide a detailed understanding for the true opportunities being presented by Georgia. You have everyone's bios in your packets and on the excellent app that was created for this uh, forum, but let me make a short introduction about our various panelists, if I can. Uh, to my right, we have Mamuka Bakhtadza, who is the Minister of Finance of Georgia. Let me first publicly congratulate Minister Bakhtadza for becoming Finance Minister. Uh, took this job just over a week ago, and until recently he was in charge of Georgia's railway. So he knows the topics we're talking about today intimately. And I don't want to raise the bar too high for your presentation today, but I have to tell you that one of my, uh, oh, let's see, first a round of applause. Nice. And I, and I was saying, I don't want to raise the bar too high for you, but one of my favorite things to do when I come to Georgia is speak with Mamuka because he is truly one of the most visionary and forward-thinking leaders I believe we have in Georgia. Uh, and I'm looking forward to what he has to say today. To my left, joining us is, is uh, Mr. Abbas Akudi, who's the Minister of Roads and Urban Development of the Islamic Republic of Iran. I think it's very important that we have such a uh, <laughs> senior representative from Iran, and I'm very happy you're here. Thank you. Then we have Mr. Levan Akvedeliani, CEO of the Anakli Development Consortium. And I think Anakli really is one of the most exciting projects going on in Georgia right now, and I'm all interested to hear what he has to say. Then we have Mr. Uh, Javid Gubernov. Where are we? Yeah, there we are. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Chairman of Azerbaijan Railways. Azerbaijan Railways is one of the key linchpins in the east-west transit corridor. And then we, let me welcome Maksat Kabashev, who's <laughs> Vice President for Development of Kazakhstan Railways. Again, one of the most important pieces in this puzzle. Then we'll turn over here to Mr. Andre Hempel from uh, Tra General Manager of Trans Eurasia Logistics. Uh, this is really an essential company if you're gonna, that helps businesses take advantage of all these networks. If you need to move goods across Eurasia, this is the company you have to go see. And finally, I'd like to invite um, a round of applause for Mr. Zhang Heilin. 
He, he's the CEO of Renwin Finance. Renwin is a major provider of trade finance uh, services, which are a key ingredient for this, this successful trade route. Renwin's also part of a major group of Chinese manufacturers who would actually consume all of the services being presented here on the panel. Um, and that's why I've asked Mr. Zhang to speak last, because I want to hear from him at the end of this panel if everyone else has done a good job of selling their services, uh, since he's the ultimate customer. Uh, but I think they're all going to do a great job, and I invite everyone to speak for about three to five minutes, and then we can take some questions and have a little discussion uh, amongst us. Uh, but Mr. Mr. Bakhtadze, if I could uh, begin with you, please. Uh, thanks, Matt. Uh, it's, of course, a, a big pleasure for me to be a participant of this uh, uh, panel. Uh, government of Georgia, uh, two years ago, decided to start this platform yes, of the Belt and Road idea here in Georgia, together with our partners. And in 2017, only two years after we started the implementation of this idea, we, we see very tangible results. And personally, I'm really very happy. You know, we have more than 2,000 participants, and it clearly shows that Georgia, together with our friends and partners, are on a, are, uh, on a very uh, interesting uh, way to develop uh, our common corridors. It's very important for our countries, and here on this panel you can see uh, our friends and colleagues from Germany, Iran, Azerbaijan, Kazakhstan, China. These are the countries which three years ago decided uh, to start a very bright idea. Yes. The corridor in which we are participating has a lot of advantages, you know. It's, 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 it's very short, it's very safe, uh, etc. But we used to have one big disadvantage, you know, a so-called big number of players in the corridor. And uh, we decided that uh, it was the time to change this disadvantage into an advantage and to start working under a so-called one-window principle. And we created two very uh, important corridors. The first one is uh, the central corridor. Uh, President of China, Xi Jinping, called our corridor like this, so-called the middle corridor. We have this middle corridor association which involves all the countries, which you can see on the map, and that was a really a game changer when we started this three years ago. Uh, I remember, you know, I used to hear some voices from some experts that this corridor will not have any significant advantage. And after three years, what we can see is that in terms of time and quality, uh, we have really extraordinary uh, results. And I would like once again to uh, use this opportunity and thank our uh, partners uh, along this corridor. Another corridor which was kind of uh, uh, less popular uh, is uh, uh, Southwest Corridor, which is the idea to connect uh, Persian Gulf with the with Black Sea. Uh, and uh, if you look at these two corridors and uh, at, at investments uh, along these two corridors, it is more than 21 billion USD. Yeah, it's, it's enormous amount and it clearly shows that the government of uh, these countries give this idea the top priority. It's very important. Um, we started implementing these ideas uh, three uh, years ago when the prices on commodities went down and that wasn't the best time for, for the railway business and generally for the business in logistics sector. But however, we were the first one 
who were successful to diversify our cargo portfolio. And if you look at the latest statistics, you can see that we are number one region in the world in terms of the containerization of the goods. Yes, and it's it going to be clearly the trend for the next 20 years. Uh, but of course, the infrastructure should be further developed. Uh, uh, our colleagues in Kazakhstan, they have very good projects apart from railway. They recently finished construction of a new port, Kurik, which is very important for our corridor. Uh, in Azerbaijan, we see very significant investments in, uh, in, in infrastructure. Uh, port Aliat, very soon going to become one of the main hubs, I would say. The uh, modernization of Azerbaijan uh, railway is in the pipeline. We recently launched Bakut Pilisi cars. Uh, uh, in 2019, we will finish very significant project for our country, uh, the modernization of Georgian railway, which is going to triple the capacity of, uh, of our railway network. And of course, we should definitely mention uh, deep sea port in Anaklia. Yeah, we, we desperately need the deep sea capacities on an eastern coast of the Black Sea. And uh, I'm sure that once these, infra these pieces of puzzle are ready, we're going to uh, face another wave of a huge uh, development uh, in uh, uh, our region. And uh, what we see today is that we see the interest from, from both big economic giants, I would like to say like this, from China and from European Union and also from the countries from the Persian Gulf in uh, terms of, of these corridors. And uh, this is our vision and uh, our philosophy that with uh, making the connectivity better and more efficient. Also, this will be a good prerequisite for the cultural interrelationship. If you look at the history of the mankind, you will immediately notice that without uh, good cultural uh, interconnectivity, you won't be able to create a big economic value and bring the peace to the region. So I would say that uh, from uh, uh, humanitarian perspective as well, uh, this uh, idea uh, is uh, a very bright future. And once again, I would like to take this opportunity and thanks everybody who came uh, to our forum. Let me repeat once again myself, it's more than 2,000 participants. It clearly shows the interest uh, into uh, our corridors. And, and, and I believe that after two years, when uh, we're going to meet again, uh, we will mention very interesting figures, kind of 300,000 TUs uh, from China to Turkey, 200,000 TUs via uh, Port Anakle to European Union and Ukraine, etc. We are absolutely sure about this. Thank you once again. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Minister, really showing us how we're sitting at the heart of a dynamic region that's just unbridledly growing. If I can turn to uh, Mr. Houdi, if you would uh, enlighten us on your view, view of the world. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, first of all, let me say salam to everybody. And it's my great pleasure just to be in the Belt and Road the Forum. And I would like just to thank the government of the Republic of Georgia for this great occasion. But regarding the logistic facilities, uh, I would like just uh, to emphasize that on what we have, because uh, in this forum we, we have heard about new development in uh, different uh, modes of, product, uh, modes of uh, tra transportation. But I think the facilities that we have, it's enormous. And we are not uh, utilizing them in a good way. For example, in Iran, uh, we have the different ports with the capacity of 185 billion tons. 
uh, with a very good draft. So very large uh, ships can uh, come over there and uh, we can connect easily south to north and just to serve all the uh, Central Asian uh, countries as well to the north, as come to China, as well to Russia. But the most important thing, uh, how we can utilize these uh, facilities. Just for your information, uh, we have about 13,000 kilometers of uh, rail and for more than 3,000 rail under construction. And uh, the highways that uh, we have is more than uh, 40,000 kilometers. So there are a lot of uh, facilities. But uh, the thing that uh, I would like just to suggest in this uh, forum, let us just to utilize these uh, facilities. Uh, for uh, doing uh, so, uh, uh, we are just uh, developing uh, different corridors, one uh, south to north corridors from India to Iranian ports and uh, through the uh, Caspian Sea to the north countries. This is one of the famous corridors uh, which uh, works very well. And uh, Russia and India are two main counterparts of this um, corridor. The second corridor uh, that uh, we mentioned, this is the same corridor that uh, His Excellency mentioned about the Persian Gulf to uh, Black Sea. Uh, corridor, which uh, includes about six countries. Uh, it is not just a hard corridor. We are thinking together how we can uh, utilize and how we can facilitate the trade between these six countries and just to bringing down the tariffs and just to uh, remove any obstacles which are there and just to facilitate trade between uh, uh, these countries. So uh, there are other countries as well from uh, China to from uh, east to west, from China to Iran and to the west. So uh, we can utilize all of them. The thing that I would like just to focus in this uh, forum it is about the logistic facilities. Uh, we have provided the, uh, good areas for hinterland just behind our ports. The area for the hinterland in, for the Shahid Rajai port in Bandar Abbas is about 5,000 hectares. In Imam Khomeini port, we have about 11,000 hectares. A very, uh, in just coming uh, Sunday, we are uh, going just to inaugurate uh, the Chabar port on the Oman Sea with a very, uh, I think they draft about uh, 16 to 17 uh, meters, so we can uh, uh, give service to all the ocean, uh, large ocean uh, ships. And uh, we have had uh, three trial uh, ships from India to Afghanistan just very recently. So uh, again, in Chabar as well, we have uh, more than uh, 2,000 hectares for Interland. So uh, the thing that I'm suggesting to all of you, if any one of you wants just to do business with the South, um, so we are very happy just to provide the facilities uh, for logistic services and also uh, just uh, to give services about uh, trucks as well as uh, rail in Iran. Other thing that I would like just to mention to you is about aviation as well. Uh, you know that the, the, our region is uh, very complicated and very difficult. We, have, we are living in a very difficult region. Uh, but uh, fortunately, this is my honor just to say the Iranian routes, all routes, uh, marine, aviation, rail, and uh, trucks are very safe and secure. So the security and safety, which are two main issues, we can uh, find them 
is then uh, completely in this corridor and uh, we are uh, assuring you that uh, we are supporting your uh, business in the region. Regarding the aviation, you know that uh, after the conflict of the Qatar, just in one day we provided uh, aviation and uh, air traffic uh, services to the Qatar airline, which was about one, more than 170 aircraft just uh, mm -hmm. across Iran. So it, it was just uh, within seven hours. So uh, we are uh, right now, the uh, air traffic over Iran is more than uh, 1,000 aircrafts per day. So again, in this uh, manner as well, just for all our sky, as well as uh, our airports and uh, ports are uh, servicing all the nations, so we are working for the peace, and uh, we think that uh, in the very complicated region of Middle East, uh, we are uh, playing a very crucial role just to keep the peace and keep the, all the corridors safe and secure for all nations. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Very interesting to hear what's all the developments in Iran. Levon, we've heard all day. Everyone has heard all day about Anaklia Port, and it's now your turn to discuss your baby. Okay, thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. It is an honor to be here today with you um, on this very important forum organized by the Georgian government, which I would like to thank. I'd like to thank the organizers as well for inviting me. Um, I, I have about three topics that I would like to discuss about Georgia, but specifically. Yeah, about Georgia in relation to, the, to it being a transportation and logistics hub. Uh, I won't go into much detail about the environment of business and the, the friendliness of business environment in Georgia, but uh, just want to mention that the array of free trade agreements that Georgia has managed to uh, agree with different countries gives a very unique opportunity to, um, to um, different countries um, uh, and local enterprises and international enterprises to come base their operations in Georgia and then connect to the wider world from Georgia. So first thing that I wanted to talk about is potential. So Georgia has a, an immense potential to, uh, in terms of transportation and logistics business. It has been for years uh, played a focal point in the ancient Silk Road. It has always connected, played a connection role between Europe and Iran. It has always been a, uh, a connecting dot for Central Asia and Europe and the West. Um, and in general, this sector has played a, a very important role in uh, the growth of the country. And I'm sure that in decades to come, it will play uh, a significant role in, in the future growth. Um, again, um, in order to materialize, I mean, take, uh, capitalize on this uh, potential, Georgia is a need of modern infrastructure. So um, again, the, to, the number of events in the region are affecting trade. And it is actually very now easy to lose cargo going through your corridor and very hard to retain and, um, and, and, uh, and uh, attract new cargo. So in order to stay competitive, Georgia needs modern, efficient, and reliable transport infrastructure, and this is concerning all types of modes, rail, road, and maritime. And I think one of the vital points in this chain is the need for the deep sea port, which Mr. Mamuka has mentioned, uh, and the importance of it. And with a deep sea port, with a new deep sea port, and a connectivity to a, a high capacity rail and road, I'm, uh, we can guarantee reduction of transit time, we can guarantee reduced cost and reliability, and hence attract new cargo from different, different areas. So Georgia, like other countries in the region which are promoting and, and, and investing in their infrastructure, is also actually working very hard towards this specific solution. And I think one, it has to be mentioned that railway is undergoing a modernization project that, of a scale not seen for the last 25 years. 
Uh, so in the, about two years, it will have a double the capacity which it has currently. Uh, the east-west highway is being constructed uh, very actively. And of course, I'm here to talk about uh, more in, in more detail about the Anaclia project and what it brings uh, to, the, to Georgia and to the region. So Anaclia has been selected as the most suitable place for a deep seaport on the Georgian coast. And the largest infrastructure project of, of this country will be located on 340 hectares, which has been allocated by the government of Georgia. And um, once fully developed, it will be, have a capacity of up to 100 million tons. Now, this is one of the very first PPP projects between Georgia government and uh, private sector, which, which is led by a, an Aklia development consortium, which was founded by TBC Holding and Conti International. And um, the depth of the port will allow us to accept the largest container vessels that can call on the other Black Sea ports and call, can call, pass through the Bosphorus Strait, which is 10,000 TU vessels. Now, the, con the terminals we have actually in August of this year have selected a, uh, a terminal operator, which is a US-based, uh, very uh, uh, world-famous uh, SSA Marine. They have operations in over 250 different locations or, all across the world. And first phase of the port uh, which we are starting to construct in December of this year, will be operational in 2020 and will have a capacity of up to 900,000 TUs and up to 1.5 million tons of dry bulk. This is phase one. Uh, what's very important as well is behind the port, we have allocated up to almost 2,000 hectares now uh, that we are going to be developing a brand new city, uh, a green city, a smart city, and, and a special economic zone. Um, the, uh, so, of course, the special economic zone and the, and the city in time will become a, a very important generator of cargo as different companies move uh, to this area. But I, I believe that once comp the companies, that when they move, they'll have the ability to um, take advantage of free trade, uh, free taxes, and uh, a special regulatory regime, which actually the first steps of the of implementation of the special regulatory regime has already been taken by including Anaclia in the Constitution of Georgia, giving the again and the plans are there to create a special administrative zone which will be governed separately. So, to summarize, um, this project, along with other developments, infrastructure developments in the region, rail and road, I mean, will boost uh, trade activities in the region. Uh, I truly believe that it will increase the reliability of Southern Caucasus, the Caucasus Transit Corridor, the CTC, which is very important for, I think, everybody, all the stakeholders that we are in this panel right now and all the countries involved. And as, uh, for Georgia, it will revitalize its role on the ancient Silk Road. And we believe we will be serving as a gateway, we will serve as a gateway for trade between East and West. So. Um, our goal, our vision, is to become a connecting dot between large economies, China, Europe, US, India, Iran, and we will ex extend significant effort in achieving this goal. So this is a very long-term project. It's a 50-plus year project. And there are a lot of opportunities around this project. And what we value most, and I, I believe Georgia values most, is long-term reliable partnerships, and we invite you to join us on this very journey. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank, thank you very much. Fascinating to hear, and, and you and the Georgian government and uh, TBC have to be congratulated for having such a big vision for how to transform Georgia and, and the Black Sea and the transportation corridor. Um, Mr. Gurbanov, I'd love to hear from you about uh, everything we're doing in Az with the Azerbaijan Railway. Спасибо. Спасибо за такой прекрасный форум. Я очень благодарен правительству Грузии, что мы собрались сегодня. Сегодня наше государство пользуется огромным потенциалом географически выгодно расположение наших стран, предлагает возможные условия для усовершенствования и улучшения материально-технической базы создание мощной инфраструктуры, а также 
продвижения международных логистических проектов, в которые мы вовлечены. С вашего позволения мне хотелось бы обратить ваше внимание на некоторые совместные проекты, которые создадут грузовладельцам благоприятные условия для оптимизации их цепочных поставок, а также разу увеличит транс транзитный потенциал наших стран в грузовом эквиваленте. Одним из них является средний коридор, коридор который предназначен для удовлетворения логистического спроса между Турцией и странами Европы, с Китаем и странами Центральной Азии. Грузоперевозка по данному маршруту осуществляется по территориям Казахстана, Каспийского моря, Азербайджана, Грузии и далее, в зависимости от пункта назначения через порты Грузии в страны Европы или Турцию. Нужно отметить, что в короткое транзитное время оптимизированная процедура документации, благоприятные климатические условия, а также экономически выгодный тариф в соотношении с качеством предоставляемых услуг, специально согласованным для увлечения грузопотока, на данном маршруте является определенным преимуществом средного коридора. Одним из приоритетных проектов для нас является железная дорога баку тибриси карс открытый, который состоялся 30 октября этого года. Новая железнодорожная линия соединит страны Центральной Азии и Китая с Турцией, странами Южной Европы. Данный проект имеет особенно важное значение для Азербайджана, Грузии и Турции. Мы верим, что данная железнодорожная линия поможет транзитным маршрутам, проходящим через наши страны и совместно с Черноморским портом Грузии, Пот и Батуми, позволит выйти на новый уровень трансконтинентальных грузоперевозок, предлагая грузоволодельцам комплекс интегрированных логистических услуг. Нами совместно с грузинской стороной была отработана и выработана тариф на перевозки различных грузов через порты Пот и Батум. Нам удалось поднять отношения двух железных дорог на такой уровень, при котором, уверенно можно сказать, маршрут работает в режиме двух государств единой дороги. Регулярно проводятся встречи наших специалистов, при которых обсуждаются, разрабатываются разные модели встраивания логистической цепочки по самым оптимальным, оперативно принимаясь решения со стороны руководства. Среди таких проектов можно указать перевозку таких грузов, как перевозка мазута и газоил, селитры, сахарного песка, карбамита, серы, нефтопродуктов, Туркменистана и других генеральных грузов, включая контейнерную перевозку по маршруту Поти, Патуму, Баку, Алат и обратно. После обсуждения с грузинской железной дорогой срок действия существующих льготных ставок будут продолеваться на следующий практовый год. Отрадно, что нам удалось согласовать пропуск угля из Казахстана и направление Украины и Европы через порт Патуми. Ожидаемый минимальный объем перевозки 500 тысяч тонн в год. Отправление первой партии грузов начинается в декабре. Аналогичные работы в данный момент ведутся совместно с грузинскими коллегами и с турецкой стороной. С целью привлечения новых объемов грузов на маршрут покупки тиблицы карс Принимая во внимание тот факт, что данный маршрут в основном ориентирован на реализацию торговли с Турцией со стран, со странами Европы и России, Китаем, странами Центральной Азии, Среди потенциальных ожидаемых грузов можно выделить пшеницу из Казахстана, из России, хлопок из стран Центральной Азии, лесоматериалы и угол металл, металлопродукции России, назначением на Турцию, строительные материалы, текстиль, электротовары, продукты питания и другие виды грузов в режиме экспорта из Турции. Прогнозируемый объем грузопотока – который обеспечит проект по хитиблисе Карст, на первом этапе оценивается в среднем порядке 5 миллионов тонн ежегодно. Хочу сообщить, что сегодня отправились 3, 32 груженных контейнера с продуктами питания и строительными материалами из Турции в Азербайджан и страны Центральной Азии. А также в порт Курок прибыли 20 груженных контейнеров с грузом зерной из Казахстана на значение Турции. Это, это как бы начинание, начинается работа в Акуте Близкар. В заключение хочу сказать, что на достигнутом мы не останавливаемся и не собираемся, будем продолжать искать новые 
тушавы сенствовны процесса грузоперевозок для повышения транзитного потенциала всех стран региона. Благодарю за внимание. Thank you, thank you very much. Um, now we're slowly moving east. Uh, if we can go from Mr. Gubernov to Mr. Kabashev to talk about uh, the Kazakh side of the uh, Caspian Sea. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, first of all, I would like to thank you, the organizers of this uh, very useful forum on behalf of Kazakhstan Railways National Company. And as you know, Kazakhstan is located right in the middle of the Eurasian continent. So by definition, we have a huge potential for developing the transit uh, transportation via Kazakhstan. So in this regard, Kazakhstan Railways today plays the main role in Kazakhstan in, uh, to develop this potential further. And today, the, it needs to be noted that 35% of revenue of company already comes from the transit, uh, for, from the, uh, transit services. I know it, it, it counts for 12% of overall freight turnover of company. Uh, if we go to the uh, strategy of company, uh, it goes in line with the national strategy, so-called Nurlijol, and uh, it's, uh, it has a great synergy with the Chinese initiative One Belt, One Road. So the two countries basically uh, agreed to, to develop the eastern uh, vector of the transit together, together with the uh, Azerbaijan, Gruzia, uh, t t Turkey. So uh, in the, on this route, we have, uh, on, on this strategy, we have several main routes crossing Kazakhstan. First of all, it's uh, from China to Europe via Russia, Belarus. Also, the uh, very important route, it's Trans-Caspian Trans Trans -Caspian International Transportation Route, going from China through, via Kazakhstan, Azerbaijan, uh, Georgia to Turkey, and newly, newly built uh, Baku, Tbilisi, Kars uh, road, uh, also railroad, is a place will play a significant role in the in this in this direction also. But also we have uh, we are developing the routes for going from China uh, to Central Asia and Persian Gulf, and also we are now working on the north-south so-called corridor. During the uh, Several last years, Kazakhstan made a huge investments in this uh, infrastructure, logistic and transport infrastructure. Uh, in recent nine years, around 28 billion US dollars have been invested in this infrastructure. And uh, more than 1.5 thousand kilometers of new railroads uh, have been built already, and around 4,000 highways also have been, have been built in Kazakhstan in order to keep this transit growing. So uh, there are several, um, and we expect that during the next three years, uh, Kazakhstan will invest around initial, uh, additional 8 billion US dollars, particularly in this trans caspian International Transportation Route. What is it? Let me tell you in the next slide. We have this. Um, there, is a, there is a route, there is a numbers of TEUs that are predicted to be uh, transported via using, using, this, using this direction. And there are several key um, main points on this route. First of all, it's a jointly managed, managed uh, seaport in Lanyungan in China, where Kazakhstan team usually together with the Chinese partners, we are consolidating the cargo at this point. And, uh, and send it the containers to, to the next key point, which is free economic zone, Horgos Eastern Gateway, so-called, where, the, where the, um, the containers are being redistributed into different, different, different directions. Now it goes through the uh, Kazakhstan. It's, it's also very important to say that the new road between just Kazgan being new inside Kazakhstan, it's, around 1,000 kilometers has specifically built for this purpose. And uh, the, it ends from Kazakhstan side of the two ports, Aktau ports and new Kurik port, which is also newly built and, and uh, has been launched uh, uh, this, year, this year. So uh, if you see after that, uh, crossing Caspian Sea, we go through Azerbaijan, Georgia, right to the Turkey. So this is a new route, which is which is have a great potential for the for the for the further development, for the further development. 
uh, by our plan by 2020 to uh, reach the overall capacity uh, of these two ports uh, using these routes around 25 million tons per year. And uh, we believe that it's a very, very realistic goal because the dynamic with the countries involved in this project are, are now developing, Azerbaijan, Georgia, uh, it's, it's, uh, it's huge, so we see that there is a big, big potential and we believe there is a way how to connect not only countries, also the people uh, in, 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 our, in our region. In the end, I would like to say that we, as a Kazakhstan Railways, we are servicing our clients and the speed that now is possible to achieve is already uh, achieved. It's around 30, 40 days going from the eastern China uh, to, to Turkey. Well, thank you very much. Thank you. Really, excellent. Thank, thank you so much for that. Andre, you're the first port of call for uh, many companies trying to sort out which route to take. What can you tell us? Uh, first of all, um, many thanks for the warm welcome here in Georgia and for the great organization. And uh, it's an honor for us to share with you some ideas or opportunities for new uh, business on other routes is in the moment is on the way. Yeah, Transracial Logistics, uh, who we are, where we are. Um, it's a long history. We are more or less uh, with our shareholders uh, in this time from, from focus on the German and Russian side. We are the pioneer for the first trains from China to Europe. It was 2008. And during this time, uh, when I look uh, to the last two, three years, we speak not only or not more about uh, pioneer business, it's a regular business. And what is important, and that is, uh, also brings me to, um, to this region here, um, ideas, really important. You must have strong partners on all, on all sides, for, for organizing the business, you need strong partners uh, from the railway side. You need uh, the right partners also from the customer side, which are uh, trust, new ideas, and you need time to prepare such services. And when I look uh, today, there are so many trains on the way, and yeah, Transurasia is not only alone on this corridor, but this is, this is good. This bring a, a stabilization and a base for, for developing in the market. And um, my bridge to, to uh, this area here is, or region is, um, it's really important to, uh, to look what is uh, a good idea for change some uh, transport modes. And everybody from us knows uh, that the goods looking for their own way. And but sometimes it's uh, it's good to support the goods a little bit. And um, what we have done in our uh, coming from our experience and knowledge, we have looked what is possible uh, to connect existing markets with other markets, new markets. And it was mentioned uh, before from my colleagues here. Uh, there are also new routes uh, between China and Europe on the way. And I think this corridor via uh, the Caspian and Black Sea or Turkey is an additional good corridor for, for reach new areas also in Europe. It's not only the area of, of Germany and, and Netherlands and, and Belgium is interesting. Also areas like France and Italy and, and the middle of Europe would be more and more interesting. And I think that is, that is absolutely the right way. And we have learned also it needs time to install such products, to, to find customers they uh, trust these products. And that is also what we want to bring from our side into this um, um, activities that we want to look on which way we can connect Europe via Caucasus region uh, to, um, to Iran. To, and further on to other uh, destinations. And this is also what we have learned. Uh, we work on this project, and Mr. Mamuka knows this. 
We have spoken about the end of 2015 about let us start in the next year and yeah, we are, have prepared this service with strong partners on this way. They are also only here, all here. And we need one year to bring the story deeper to the customers. And uh, today we are sitting here and we can speak about uh, a concept via a route which is prepared. It is one of uh, alternative. And what is important, and I will go a little bit more for the last seconds to uh, the few of the customers. All new services or products you will bring in the market is depends if you are competitive in transit time, if you are competitive in rates, and if you are competitive to uh, bring this business safe from to the, the uh, destinations they are uh, on the way. And I think that is uh, the important point, and that is what I have learned also together with the colleagues here, it's possible, but it's not possible to do it alone. It's possible in a, in a bundle of uh, partners for, for the creating, for the, uh, for the production side, for partners which are responsible for organizing this business like TEL, and you need customers as pilots as the first to bring us in. And what I think, and it is really my absolutely uh, 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 opinion. Um, this region and focus to Georgia, and it's also what we have discussed, Levan, in our last meeting, it could be really the option to get as a, to, to function as a hub in this region like a cross, to bundle uh, several logistics uh, possibilities with partners in the network and to bring it uh, really like a hub to, to customers from different kind of uh, business and I think it is the right way and it is very good to learn and to, to hear it also here that uh, everybody from this colleagues here want to go this way further and like uh, the project with Anna Clear show us uh, it's important to think about what is the next step to make this story a little bit more and more sexier as it is at the moment. Thank you. Thank you. And that's, that's great. I love that last slide because not only are we seeing that it's uh, faster, but it's actually more ecological uh, and reduces green, greenhouse gas, which is utterly fantastic. So, I mean, you're really seeing how this new thinking up here is, is not only about uh, getting goods to markets faster, but uh, actually helping the world. So there we go. Um, so let us conclude uh, with, with our last presentation uh, by Mr. Zhang uh, from Ren Wen. Uh, 我是瑞银长江投资公司执行董事何总裁张海宁我们的客户涵盖中国大型金融服务和制造业为大型租赁和保利项目提供资金支持
，我们的大部分客户目前在中国。我们现在正专注于在新丝绸之路上拓展我们的客户。我们非常有兴趣与中国的货物进出口商合作，为他们提供金融服务。我们服服务的同时，也也受用于欧洲对中国的出口。此外，我们对于金融机构及大型企业发展长期合作伙伴关系，进行保利和贸易融资服务，也非常感兴趣。这是我们第一次访问格鲁吉亚，但我们一直密切关注这个国家，因为它是中国“一带一路”战略的重要组成部分。我们的客户和合作伙伴、制造公司也一直在研究它。我们都看到了格鲁吉亚的市场潜力。正如我们在这个环节的讨论中听到的，格鲁吉亚正成为欧洲和亚洲之间的主要转运点，公路、铁路、海运都在一起。通过穿越格鲁吉亚，亚洲和欧洲之间的运输将会更加高效。我对格鲁吉亚提出的机会感到兴奋。我认为，瑞银将会有很多机会资助来自格鲁吉亚的贸易。我们渴望成为格鲁吉亚的好朋友，使格鲁吉亚成为丝丝绸之路的枢纽。此外，我们的客户和合作伙伴、制造公司将会高度关注通过格鲁吉亚的航运。并抓住这个难得的机会，我仅代表他们为格鲁吉亚作为欧亚运输的高效的、便利的枢纽站表示肯定。谢谢。Thank you, Mr. Zhang. That's that's great and great endorsement of what we've heard on this panel of of the real opportunity being presented.、Uh, By all these different countries and different businesses working together、uh, to make logistics work faster and better、uh, and move goods to markets quicker.、Um, speaking of logistics, though, as logistics、uh, wait for no man and dominate our lives,、uh, Mr.、Uh, Kavashev has to leave for the airport shortly, and we don't want him to miss his flight. So I'm going to start with a, a, a quick question、uh, first to you, Mr. Kavashev, and I appreciate also Mr.、Uh, Gurbanov if you, you would add in afterwards. But I think the question is, for me, the one of the most fascinating pieces of this、uh, Silk Road、um, train connections is the piece between the Caspian Sea. How quickly you can move goods from train onto a ship and then back off a ship onto the train, and it really doesn't slow things down. But could you、uh, kind of help educate the audience a little bit about how that process works a little bit? Okay,、uh, as I said before,、uh, there are two main places where the The containers have、uh, been reloaded from the、uh, train to the vessels. First is Aktau、uh, uh, Seaport, and the second is Kurik Seaport, Newport. So uh, um, uh, basically, it's a common operation. So there is a special、uh, railroad built. It's the、um, the trains comes as Much as possible, closer to the to the vessels of being reloaded in Kurik and in Aktau and、uh, sent to Azerbaijan. So it's uh, uh, the number of containers the, the, in, the, in tons. So we think that it,、uh, it will grow up to the 20 million a year in by 20, 2020. Today already in 2017. 1.2 million tons already have been reloaded in this in the, from, from from Port Kurik. Great. Well, I think that logistics is not only just words, but also we need to invest in there. This infrastructure. Infrastructure in Azerbaijan is very strong. We believe that, and you know, in the next five years, Azerbaijan is going to build. развивать свою инфраструктуру еще больше. И приблизительное вложение азербайджанского правительства это будет, если в их валенте долларах, если взять, это приблизительно 3 миллиарда долларов. Знаете, что Азербайджан вложил деньги в строительство 
Баку Тибриси Карс, 755 миллионов. Знаете, что мы собираемся выделить Ирану 500 миллионов долларов строительства Решта Стара. Знаете, что в этом около Каспийского моря строится один из самых крупнейших портов наших, который заканчивается, сейчас в данный момент он переваливает грузы. И на заканчивание второго этапа это будет приблизительно 15 миллионов тонн груза и 100 тысяч, 200 тысяч контейнеров. Это первое. Мы хотим реорганизовать и вложить деньги, полностью обновлять и строительство север-юг, который соединяет нас, Россия и Ираном. И одновременно иранские друзья тоже строят газвен Раш, заканчивают, они это хотят заканчивают. Это нас будет соединять, значит, Бендарабаском и Чабарским портом прямо по и э, Карской дорога. Мы дальше будем развивать нашу э, э, инфраструктуру, но перевозки всегда в морях бывают чуть-чуть болезненные. Это зависит от погодных условий, от э, бывает, э, ну, есть такие. В Азербайджане поэтому построен новый кораблостроительный завод. Мы будем в 2019 году уже иметь значит, 15 паромов. Это позволит нам где-то буквально 6-7 миллионов тонн груза в вагонном порядке перевозить. А все остальное, которое открыто грузы есть, это можно другими кораблями перевозить. Mr. Ahudi, if I could ask you, what do you see as the kind of drivers uh, of Iranian exports and imports over the next, say, five years? Everyone seems to be staying ahead of uh, the curve, and, and so Iran is going to be doing more business, we think. So what do you see as the drivers? Uh, um, I think uh, in the region we should work together. At the end of the day, nobody can uh, go alone. So this is the thing that uh, we think about it. So uh, the main drivers for us, I think, uh, uh, connecting uh, all the countries together. Uh, at the end of the day, everybody which wants to come from India or uh, Oman Sea to the north, the main ports are in the Iran. So you have Khomeini port. Bandar Abbas and as also very recently Chabahar. Uh, but uh, we think uh, we should just to cooperate with other countries. So uh, we have very good relationship with uh, Turkey, with Azerbaijan, and uh, this uh, with Russia, with the Central Asian uh, countries and also with uh, Azerbaijan and this uh, new initiative, Southwest Corridor. So I think at the end of the day, if you would like just to increase the number of uh, cars and also passengers that are our uh, country, we should just still remove any obstacles and uh, to think about the way that uh, we can find win-win uh, solution. Uh, right now, uh, in the region, all our ports are free economic zone, all of them. So we are we are providing very, very good facilities. Even uh, we have a free economic zone and also free zone. Just uh, in uh, Imam Khomeini Airport City, which is about uh, 13, thousand kilometers. It is very, very huge uh, facilities over there. And uh, we think uh, we need just to share all of these facilities with our neighbors. Also, uh, now we are connecting all our um, highways to Asian highways. Uh, and also we are, we are providing very, very good faci border facilities mm -hmm. to anybody. Uh, also, um, Asian uh, Transrail, which uh, comes to be completed in Iran, because we are uh, connecting to Astara, Iran, we are connecting to Azerbaijan, already we are connected to uh, Turkey, already we are connected to uh, Turkmenistan. 
just say we have about 32 kilometers just to connect, to be connected to Iraq. We are going to be connected to Iraq. So I think we are we, we are connected our rail to the Afghanistan. So uh, I think uh, the best way is just uh, to think how we can bring people just to work together. Excellent. Excellent. Thank you. I just want to wrap things up slowly, but uh, Mr. Bakhtadze, we've, uh, it seems the name of the game up on this panel is uh, staying ahead of the demand. Um, and obviously you've been a pioneer for that in Georgia. Anakli Port's a huge part of that. What do you see as the two or three other things that Georgia's doing to you know, get, get ready for the next decade uh, as, as demand grows for this route? Um, thank you for this question. Well, uh, of course, the history of railways, ports, and uh, other infrastructure is very long in the, in the region, but the economic model itself, which we are discussing now, we started three years ago from the scratch. I, I mean it, from the scratch. Mm -hmm. yeah. And uh, what results we have so far? Yes, we have uh, free trade agreement with uh, European Union, we have free trade agreement with China. We are in the middle, middle, uh, in the middle of negotiations with India. Uh, we have organized two very important associations. One is the uh, Central Corridor Association, and, and, and another one is Southwest. Yeah. And uh, the main goal now of Georgia and our partners, and you see our partners on. On, on, on this panel is with the joint efforts to push this uh, idea to another level, uh, to capitalize on it and to convert this idea into specific numbers and figures and GDP growth for our countries. Yes. Uh, and this is already a very good base. Yeah, believe me, three years ago when we were starting you know, working on, 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 on this idea, you know, personally, uh, I, uh, I had to see a lot of skepticism for, for, for many people, but today we have this very uh, tangible uh, results. So, if you look at the perspective for 2020, for example, yes, uh, as for example, uh, Kazakhstan Railway demonstrated in the presentation, only in the corridor from uh, Turkey to China we would, we would expect uh, around 300,000 TUs, yes. And with the deep support capabilities on our Black Sea shore, um, attracting additional uh, 10, 15 million ton yeah. of transit from the Persian Gulf via Iran, and additional transit from China and Central Asia, and Russia, which is very important, on the top of it can be uh, at least uh, 12 million. And we are now just uh, forecasting the future which, which uh, uh, will happen in three and maximum four years. And this is extraordinary capability for the private businesses as well because uh, we do believe that without involvement of private business, the state-owned enterprises won't be able uh, to make the inertia necessary to, to, to be successful. And um, in my opinion, the state-owned enterprises created a very good prerequisite for the private businesses also to be very successful in the, this business. And I'm very happy to hear what our colleague from, from uh, China uh, has mentioned, that we have the same opinions from our European partners. And of course, the government should try to push it uh, also as much as possible. On today's morning session, uh, Prime Minister of Ukraine you know, officially announced that the price is going to be decreased by 60% on, 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 on this new corridor, you know, from our ports to Port of Odessa, because Ukraine is a very important player yeah. for our corridor as well. So generally, I'm, I'm, I'm sure that with the uh, with the joint efforts, and this is the goal number one now for everybody, 
we can push this idea uh, to another level. Thank you. So I'm going to thank you. And I'm just going to conclude with one last question to Mr. Uh, Jong, very quick question. But you're, you're the customer here. You've heard the pitch. Are you, are you sold? Are you going to uh, recommend to your Chinese uh, business colleagues that they think about Georgia to move goods from China to Europe? I Thank you. So thank you first to the panel and everyone for participating. This is great. Um, I think as we wrap up here, uh, it's very clear that we've heard how far Georgia has come and how the overall Belt and Road Network is making it life simple, inexpensive, and efficient to move goods from one continent to another. Uh, Georgia particularly has built this legacy, and, and, and really credit goes to uh, Mr. Baktadza, you know, based on smart investments, infrastructure capacity and capabilities, and I think Anaklia really is part of this future, a uh, great future for Georgia. I uh, want to thank the panel again and then invite you all to stay for a minute as we're going to have a chance to witness history uh, as Anaklia Development uh, Consortium is going to sign two memoranda of un uh, understanding with uh, two different companies while we're here, as well as the, one of the Georgian Railway subsidiaries, GR Logistics and Terminals, also going to sell, sign two memoranda of understanding uh, to really cement some of these futures we're talking about. So you're all welcome to stay uh, as we have that signing ceremony. But before that, let me again thank the panel and, and ask everyone for a round of applause. And thank you all for doing that.